relationship and how it brings the police and the residents they serve closer together. They gathered at Paramount Studios, uniformed officers and their civilian partners. And you are the primary representatives to the police department of that community. LAPD Chief Charlie Beck addressing volunteer community police advisory board members, or CPABs for short. He asks the city's 21 CPAB boards to continue speaking with and seeking input from their communities. Part of the plan to further reduce crime in L.A. Explain why we do what we do and, and, and more importantly, let us know when you don't agree with what we do. That's how you build community. During the CPAB summit, a spokesperson from the city attorney's office explained conflicting marijuana laws. The city attorney's office says it stands by federal law in outlawing pot. And that includes medicine. And so that's federal law. And the last time I checked, California was still part of the United States, right? So, um, so federal law applies to all of us. Marijuana enforcement rules are hazy and state law is under review. Still, one thing is clear for the LAPD. It's focus in reducing property crime with the help of CPABs and their strong community ties. Burgling theft from vehicles, uh, grand theft autos, uh, thefts, all of the things really where members of the community, those of you with whom you have relationships, really can do something about. Community policing, it's helped reduce city crime dramatically over the past decade, so now the goal is to strengthen neighborhood ties even further. One way is to host a breakfast for those willing to improve their areas so much that they're willing to work for free. At the CPAB Summit in Hollywood, Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. This was the Community Police Advisory Board's 19th annual summit. City leaders encourage you to eat less meat, celebrating Olympians from USC and another Veterans Day celebration, this one in the Valley. These stories and more in City Beat. The Los Angeles City Council has passed a Meatless Monday resolution to help encourage residents to eat a more varied plant-based diet to protect their health, protect animals, and reduce their carbon footprint. Council members Ed Reyes and Jan Perry co-authored the initiative. Councilman Reyes says eating less meat is a way to stop global warming and improve our health on the local level. If we do it one plate at a time and we start on a Monday, we start ratcheting down the impact on our environment, and more importantly, introduce preventive measures for our health. By going meatless just one day a week, you reduce your saturated fat intake by 15% per meatless meal and decrease your risk of heart disease by up to 19%. With the help of the USC Trojan Band, Councilmember Jan Perry led the City Council in declaring November 9, 2012 as USC Olympian Day in the City of Los Angeles. Athletes representing USC's Olympians included swimming gold medalist Rebecca Sony and Lauren Wenger, a member of the gold medal winning U.S. women's water polo team. During the 2012 Summer Games in London, Trojan athletes earned a total of 25 medals, 12 gold, nine silver and four bronze. That's incredible. That marks the most medals earned by any American university. In addition, USC has produced 418 Olympians in the span of 108 years, also more than any American university. In response to a report on the proposed valet parking permit program released by the city's chief legislative analyst, Councilman Bill Rosendahl is encouraging his west side constituents to become engaged in the issue, which he says could have a tremendous impact on dining and entertainment destinations in the 11th district. If approved by the full city council, the valley parking permit program would require valley services to perform background checks on all of its employees and require valley drivers to obtain permits from the board of police commissioners that verifies they are licensed and insured to drive in California. On Veterans Day, Councilman Richard Alarcon hosted the 8th annual San Fernando Valley Veterans Day Parade, which stepped off at the corner of San Fernando Mission Boulevard and Laurel Canyon Boulevard. More than 120 veterans and ROTC groups, as well as area high school marching bands, took part in the parade as spectators lined the one-mile parade route. And each wartime era since World War II was represented in the parade. 
Hundreds of senior citizens celebrate Thanksgiving by attending the city's annual 90-plus luncheon. As Anita Bennett tells us, local seniors say the gathering is a hot ticket each year. With classic R&B music in the background and turkey and stuffing on the tables, these seniors rang in the holiday season at a glitzy party in Griffith Park. This is beautiful. I enjoy it. Alabama native Gussie Madison and hundreds of other seniors were treated to a day of fun at the Department of Recreation and Parks annual 90 plus luncheon. We can't forget our past and our past is the human capital, our seniors. We service well over 12,000 seniors in all our programs. Here today we'll have a two, three hundred over ninety. The party guests yes. all regularly attend senior programs in the city of LA. Do you go to the senior center? Yeah. And which one do you go to? Vista. City Councilman Tom LaBonge, who represents the area, even stopped by. Well, I'm just here to support the department and also to send the love to everybody that's here, our golden seniors. And this party wasn't just for the 90-somethings. There were several people here who are more than 100 years old, and they got the VIP treatment. The centenarians were all seated together at the two head tables. Mildred, how old are you? 100 plus. For Mildred Holland, this party is a hot ticket. I think this is the greatest thing that ever anyone could uh, be invited to. And she hopes to make it back next year. In Griffith Park, I'm Anita Bennett for LA This Week. The Los Angeles Parks Foundation and Kaiser Permanente co-sponsored the 90-plus luncheon. There was also a lot to celebrate in Watts recently. Residents joined city leaders and firefighters in celebrating the opening of Fire Station 64. Pomp and circumstance at what turned out to be quite a community event for Watts residents. The opening of Fire Station 64 brought out dignitaries, firefighters, and families eager to celebrate the new addition to the neighborhood. And the home of the Even in the toughest recession, to be able to open up a fire station that looks like this it gives these folks here, the tools that they need uh, to do their job, uh, I think is a testament to all of you, uh, the taxpayers of this city uh, who understand that we got to make investments in our fire department. The new fire station is located at 10811 South Main Street in Watts and was made possible with the purchase of property to increase the size of the parcel to a one-acre site. The new 15,250 square foot fire and paramedic station replaces the former facility at 118 West 108th Street. Constructed in 1951, that had become overcrowded to the point where the rescue ambulance had to park outside on the front apron of the station. We're grateful for the work that you do uh, to keep LA safe, to keep Watts safe, because Watts is worth it, right? Is Watts worth it? Come on, give it up. Give me some love. The community celebrated with cake that was cut, as tradition dictates, with the fireman's axe. And continuing the spirit of tradition, a fire station Dalmatian greets residents. A great way to start building relationship between firefighters and their new neighbors. And in this week's list of things to do, open air ice skating in the middle of downtown. A holiday celebration with Santa at an iconic L.A. destination. And story time with your little ones. A popular downtown holiday tradition is back. The downtown on ice outdoor skating rink at Pershing Square is once again open for the holidays. The outdoor rink, operated by the City of Los Angeles Department of Recreation and Parks, will be open every day through January 21st, 2013. Admission is just $6 and $2 for skate rental. Pershing Square is located at 532 South Olive Street downtown. Go to laparks.org slash Pershing Square for more information.
Thanksgiving will have just been over when Salvation Army Southern California will kick off the holiday season on Monday, November 26th at the original Farmer's Market at 3rd and Fairfax from 5 to 6 p.m. Their signature red kettles will be in full force, along with fun, free activities and entertainment that the whole family will enjoy. There will be a Christmas tree lighting, free photos with Santa, holiday music sing-alongs, a special tribute to the U.S. Marines Toys for Tots, and much more. The original Farmer's Market is located at 6333 West 3rd Street. For more info, call 562-264-3685. And for some quality time with your little one, head on over to the Los Angeles County Museum of Modern Art for story time in the Boone Children's Gallery. The museum hosts a story time every Monday and Friday at 2 p.m. The event is free and no reservations are needed. LACMA is located at 5905 Wilshire Boulevard. Go to LACMA.org for details. And that's a look at some upcoming things to do. And that's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellen Chang. A reminder that you could catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We leave you now with more from the San Fernando Valley Veterans Day Parade. See you back here next week for more of L.A. This Week. disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. G'day, Troy McCubbin from North Hollywood. You're watching LA City View, Channel 35, our city, our channel.
sergeants, if you could please call the members so that we can begin today's council meeting. I do want to thank the members for being here. I want to give a special thanks to Mr. Alarcon. Good morning. It is Tuesday, November 20th. I want to welcome you to your Los Angeles City Council meeting. We meet every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Public is welcome. Uh, we do not have a quorum. Oh, we, we do have a quorum. But before we do that, I'm going to go to Mr. Ed Reyes for a presentation. I'd like to invite Councilman Garcetti if he's here. Councilman Garcetti. And Councilman Weezer would like to join me. As soon as Councilman Weezer gets here, hopefully he can join us as well. Colleagues, it's, I feel very privileged and honored to be here with my council colleagues. You know, for more than a decade, Loomis Day, recognized locally as a festival of Northeast Los Angeles, has been a signature community arts and music event in neighborhoods of Northeast Los Angeles. Loomis Day at Loomis, named after Charles Loomis, the first librarian of the city, the librarian who helped build the Southeast Museum. This day showcases the community's considerable pool of musicians, poets, artists, dancers, and restaurants, representing a vast array of ethnicities and cultural traditions. It was organized by activists and neighborhood representatives in 2006 as a celebration of the history and diversity of the Northeast Los Angeles communities of Highland Park, Eagle Rock, Cypress Park, Mount Washington, Montecito Heights, Herman, El Sereno, Sycamore Grove, Lincoln Heights, and Glassell Park. For me, this festival has been one of those moments where we see our young people who, despite the cutbacks in our schools, are involved in music, involved in the arts, who are showcasing their talents. Uh, you get to see the artists from the Northeast, folks who come and do their work. There's so many new locations. We have galleries that are emerging in the Northeast. It's become a cultural destination, but it truly is a tradition that carries all the way back to the 1930s. So we just continue to celebrate and reinvent ourselves. But since 2006, the Loomis Day program has grown and now includes events such as the educational programs in Los Angeles, teachers, and a series of poetry readings and workshops in some of our local public policy libraries. Colleagues, the truth is that exponential growth has been achieved through the dedication of countless community partners. And today we are here to honor one of, the, one of those partners our own Univision KMEX Channel 34 here in Los Angeles. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> With us today is Gabriela Tessier, Alejandro Mendoza. Now, Gabriela Tessier is one of the anchors. Alejandro Mendoza is also an anchor who is a new face, I understand. <laughs> Cecilia Bogdan. Anchor and reporter, and Cecilia is amazing. She's been in, in our district, in our city, for, for as an advocate representing our issues. Moana Ramirez, KMEX executive producer, is with us. Ruben Moreno, the writer. Also today, part of the team of the advocates from our local neighborhoods is Elliot Secular, a friend. Raul Becerra, president of Bilama's Public Relations. And you know, one of the things that strikes me is that they are there at 4.35 in the morning. <laughs> when the shot begins, they start on the, I think the 5.30? 5.00? 5 a.m. show. Four o'clock to set up. Yes. 
four o'clock to set up, they're rubbing that in. <laughs> but when you talk about the sacrifice and the dedication, we got all the jovencitas in their great folklore outfits, dancing. You've got the reporters there, the producers, everyone that's behind us. And I can't thank them enough for the commitment. So it is this kind of unrelenting support of one of our local festivals that continues to certify Univision as one of our own. While they have an obvious national presence, they have not forgotten about the significance of supporting local events such as Lumis Festival. And for that, I will always be grateful. I'd like to invite my colleague, Councilor Eric Garcetti, to share a few words. Thank you very much, Councilmember Reyes, and thank you so much for making this presentation happen again. And uh, Loomis Day and Loomis Festival is something that is really at the heart of the city. Before there was Hollywood, there was Northeast Los Angeles, and uh, it's a place that's produced incredible folks, uh, not least among us, our council member here, um, and I'm proud to, to live in Northeast Los Angeles as well. But to see the, cre uh, the creative culture that is there, I think we look over the years, and I think you said it so well, Council Member Reyes, that people think that, oh, look at York and look at Figueroa and all this art is coming to it. It's like the art has always been there. It's always been a part of the traditions that we know, that we've embraced, and it's great to see its third or fourth blossoming um, lately. But I think a lot of the reason why is because of this festival and because people uh, let us know that in order to make the great new uh, piece of music or to paint the next painting or to make a sculpture, we have to know the history that came before us and the great uh, assets that have been there. And Elliot Secular is, a, is one of those community treasures that we're so proud to have worked with. I've even played the piano at, at the, uh, with a band and jammed uh, a couple years ago. They keep asking me back, but I think they're just being polite. Um, so I haven't inflicted that on anybody. But thank you to KMEX especially as well in Primera Edición, which is such an important part of our city's landscape. Uh, this is practically like you know, 6 p.m. for you guys to be up this, uh, this late. So we appreciate you coming in um, and getting up early to make sure that when we wake up, we have uh, not only the stories um, of today, but those stories of yesterday like Loomis. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Reyes, and proud to be with you and to be celebrating this year. Thank you, Husband Garcetti, and I truly see them as friends. Uh, what's precious about being one of your own is they come with a family and they brought their children with them, and they're all sitting here uh, before us, and it's great to have them. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully your teachers will see this tonight. They'll know you were here. But with that, I'd like to ask Moana Ramirez. She's the executive producer on behalf of KMEX Primera Edición. Moana. Buenos días, muchas gracias. Fue un honor para Univision, Canal 34 y Primera Edición recibir este reconocimiento. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. I think they hit it right on the nose. The enthusiasm that Loomis Day has is prevalent, and you see it as of 4 a.m. And you see it when we plan it, and all the planning that goes involved for this uh, live shot to, to partake at 4 a.m. in the morning, and at 5, 6, and 7, and all our newscasts. It's a great honor for Primera Edición to be involved in such a cultural event to preserve arts in the city of Los Angeles. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Council President, for Th this time. Thank you, and congratulations. Madam Clerk, I believe we have a, a quorum. Could you please call a roll? Alarcon Buscaino, Cardenas, Englander, Garcetti, Wizar, Caresca, Corin, LaBange, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosenau, Zion, Weston. Fifteen members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, first order of business. Approval of the minutes. Okay, Mr. Krikorian moves. Uh, correct seconds. Next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Uh, Englander moves. Cardenas seconds. Mr. President, today is Tuesday, and now would be the time for the flag salute. Okay, if I could have everyone in the council chambers please rise for our flag uh, salute. Today we will be led by Mr. Koretz. Mr. Koretz, would you lead us in our flag salute? Please put your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Koretz. Okay, before our next presentation, uh, uh, Madam Clerk, could we run through the uh, agenda? 
Items one and two are items noticed for public hearing. The Department of Building and Safety reports that the lien amount for item 1H may be reduced to $342.20 due to the receipt of partial payment. Also, they report that items 1B, G, J, K, and L may be received and filed in as much as the liens have been paid in full. Okay, so without objection, we will receive and file those those uh, items. Do we have any cards? Yes, cards on items one and two. Okay, then we'll hold that. Let's go to the next section. Items three through 18 are items for which public hearings have been held. There's a request to continue item 18 to December 12th. Without objection. Mr. Buscaino. Okay, item, we're gonna hold item four for Mr. Buscaino. Mr. Weezar, three. Members, any others? Mr. Parks? Five for a second, I just need a question answered. I didn't hear. Could we hold five for oh, a yeah, second? I, I need a question answered. Yes, no problem. And let's hold five. Okay, let's prepare to vote on the remaining items. Madam Clerk, open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Okay, next. Items 19 through 25 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those uh, items are now before us. Mr. Cardenas. Hold item 22 on the table. I, Mr. President, I wanted to call 22 special. Hold, hold one second. Mr. Cardenas, did you already say hold 20? Item 22, yes. Uh, 22. 22. Okay. Ms. Perry, we'll hold 22. Ms. Yeah. Perry? 20, uh, 22 was the one I wanted to call special. Okay, so that's already been held. Do we have cards? Yes, cards on items 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So do we have anything left to vote on? And item 20. 18. I think we have 18. It's not item 18 was done. continued to December 12th. It's a convention center item. It was continued to December 12th. Do you know who requested the continuance? Uh, the council president's office. Oh, is there a problem? Was there a problem? Oh, yeah, no, we just decided to continue it. Uh, discussions are taking place right now. So that's why I'm continuing it. Mr. Cardenas? Okay, do we have, move on to the next section? Uh, Mr. President, uh, council needs to vote on item 20. Okay, I forgot about that. Let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Fifteen ayes. And where does that bring us on the agenda? On the supplemental agenda, items 26 through 35 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. Okay, without objection, those items are now before us. Uh, any cards? Cards on item 29. Okay, members, specials, seeing none, let us uh, prepare to vote. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Okay, does that bring us to the beginning? Yes, Mr. President, to presentations or items called special. Okay, let me get Mr. LaBange. Where's Mr. LaBange and the chief? Mr. President, let's welcome the great Chief of Police of Los Angeles, Charlie Beck. And, uh, if I could, Mr. President, this would be National International Badge Day, because this badge of the LAPD is the greatest badge of any agency in the world. It's the Grand City Hall. Let's hear it for the LAPD. And, uh, Tim. Uh, Tim, if you could come up here, and Rich, if you just stand up here. Where's, uh, where's Bob right there, his team right there? Bob, come up here just for a second. Just come in up here right now. Stand with us if you would there. Show us that badge of yours. There it is. Show us so the people can see it, man. How proud are you of that badge? This is a great officer that we're going to honor right now because <laughs> Chief Beck loves this police officer, Robert Donaldson who for many years was a frontline officer, started as a training officer, 
throughout his career, uh, through true. the Wilshire area, Rampart area, Correct. was very involved, Ed Reyes, with the Alvarado Corridor and transforming MacArthur Park, on and on, and then got into Metro. And at Metro, you did a great job, because anywhere there was a problem, Bob was there. So this is not really International Police Badge Day, but it is the greatest badge day. It is your day, and we want to salute you, Mr. President, this officer and his fine wife, because not only did he retire from the police department, he became a reserve. And he was star smart enough to not become a councilman like Mr. Zine, but he continues to serve the LAPD. So I'm going to present this to you on behalf of everybody, but Thank before you. you do, the great chief of police, Charlie Beck, who is uh, loved by many. Charlie, say a few words. It's always tough to follow Tom, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try. After 38 years as a Los Angeles police officer, Bob Donaldson retired this past July. He became a reserve the day he retired. He has never missed a Tuesday picking me up in the morning, just like he did when he was working, and working all day with me. No matter how late I work, no, no matter how many events I go to, Bob is with me every day. And, and you know, we have seen so many Los Angeles police officers do that exact same thing. And I'm so proud of Bob. I'm so thrilled that his wife, Anna, is here, who he loves dearly, tells me, you know, we, we, Bob and I spend all day in the car together, driving to work, driving back from work, you know, going to events. And, you know, he tells me about his love for his wife, his love for uh, this city. He's a resident of uh, Northeast area and, uh, and his love for the Los Angeles Police Department. And I just wanted to thank Tom for, uh, for helping to put this together and to thank the council, my partners on the council, for recognizing a great Los Angeles police officer. Well, thanks, Chief. The great thing about this officer, Mr. West, that you'll love him even more. He doesn't want to make a speech. He says, <laughs> thank you. My kind of guy, and congratulations. You bet you. Right. We're going to so, get a shot. Guys, come around. Okay, now I'm going to go to uh, members. We're going to take up item five. Good. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. You bet you, Charlie. Good thank job. You, thank you. Now, we have already satisfied public comment where it relates to this item, but we only have a few cards, so I will allow it today. So I'd like to call up Richard Reardon first. Two minutes, Mr. Mayor. Wait, I have an hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> Not by my watch. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. What Los Angeles needs is more jobs, not more taxes. Enough is enough. More and more taxes will not be used properly to bail out our budget problems over the future. Sales taxes are regressive. The SEIU and I agree on at least one thing that this is not good for the working poor. People will start buying their cars, their big box items in other cities in this area that have lower sales taxes. We have to look at the future of our city. We, in 1970, unless we do something, our parks, our steep paving, our garbage pickup, et cetera, et cetera, are going to be past history. The only thing we'll have money for are pensions and a reduced police and fire department. The results, unfortunately, will be the dirty word bankruptcy. And in bankruptcy, there is no way to guess what's going to happen to pensions, police and fire, and other things. We don't want to get there. Let's do what we need to do. It's going to be tough. You have people against it who you respect a lot, but I think you have to study it very hard and determine what is going to save the city of Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. You know what, Mr. Mayor, why didn't you fix it when you were mayor? Okay. And we'll do the best we can. Oh, there's no back and forth. I get the last word. Dr. Tom Williams, 
Jim Lesner, and John Walsh. This is our house. Dr. Tom Williams, LA 32 Neighborhood Council. Reardon has said it all. We're hurting. And we can go to Alhambra, we can go to South Pasadena, we can go a lot of other places, but we're hurting. We need more jobs, we need more development. We have to become a real city to be commensurate with 3.9 million people. It's a big thing. Each one of you represent the entire population of the city of Glendale, one person. So 250,000 people each, what can we do? Yeah, we gotta raise things, we gotta get more money, we gotta get better services efficiency, and we have to deal with the pensions. DWP, the ports, the airports, police and fire. It's difficult, but it has to be done. Thank you. Thank Please you, sir. Dr. Williams. Jim Lesner, followed by John, Wal John Walsh. Good morning, I'm Jim Lesner. Um, I was looking at the investment report that you get each month. You got one on the 9th. And it shows that you have $6.7 billion in the bank right now. And that's up from 6.4 uh, in September of the investment report that you just got was for September. So uh, that's up from 6.4 in September of 2011 and $6.1 billion in September of 2010. So you're basically piling up money. And uh, I, I know you have to have contingency money. Uh, it's supposed to be about 5% of your general spending, so that'd be about $200 million. And of course, half a billion dollars would be a nice, a real nice pad. Uh, but $6.7 billion is just, uh, it's, it's not needed. It's like hoarding, because money needs to circulate. And if you take money out of circulation, uh, it kind of, it hurts the economy. Uh, and, and now you want to take more money out of circulation. I just don't get it. I mean, you, ha you have enough money to buy the Dodgers three times over. You have enough money to send every high school senior to a Ivy League college for one year to pay the tuition. Every, every high school senior in Los Angeles. Uh, you uh, I, I don't think you need to pile up more. So I, I do not understand this sales tax measure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. Come to our website, new post up today. Who's the new owner of the LA Times? Uh, first of all, Mr. Reardon uh, had to leave early. I know he had an appointment, so he's gone. The current mayor of the city of LA is against this half cent sales tax. The ex-mayor of the city of Los Angeles is against this half sales tax. And I channeled Tom Bradley from heaven. He wants you to vote against this sales tax. E even Mayor Sam wanted to do, wants you to vote against this sales tax. This is Herbie's tax. It was cooked up with the real estate lobby to avoid a real estate tax. Everybody knows it. It's known as Herbie's tax. In Spanish, impuesto del herbito, for those of you who don't speak any uh, uh, jive. Take this half, it's $200, billion, $200 million a year out of our pocket. Ten years, $2 billion. And they said, not only will people go to buy their cars in other cities, and remember, we we're surrounded by other cities. We have other cities in the middle of our city. This is unlike any city. They will go elsewhere. They'll go elsewhere to buy anything. But this is the big mistake of Herb. This could possibly cause him to lose the re-election next June to be city council president. If you are statesmanlike, you will withdraw this, because we're going to vote against it. I mean, we've got the right wing, the left wing, every wing in L.A. is against this tax, except the real estate lobby that is in the pocket of Herbie here. So vote against it and go to my website to find out who the next owner of the L.A. Times is. It's already been settled. His first name is Rupert. And I could 
Okay, thank you. I don't have Miss Fogler. You don't. You didn't fill in a card. Miss Marion, you didn't fill in a card. You didn't fill in a card on this item. You did not fill in a card. I'll fill out a card on this item. So just wait. Wait till your name is called. Help her find a seat, Sergeant. Help her find. You didn't fill out a card. You did not fill. Sergeants, sergeants, do your job. You're disrupting the meeting. She has 1921 and public comment. You, you have 1921 and public comment. No, go, 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 go. Please go take your seat. Please take your seat. Okay. Um, there are no speakers on the queue. So if we could uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes, three no's. Okay, Mr. Parks? I call it special and we haven't gotten the information from the CAO, so I... Okay, with CAO, could you please, so this is what we'll do, Mr. Parks, I'm going to have the CAO get with you, uh, and then hopefully he can answer all of your uh, questions. If he doesn't, then I'll ask for reconsideration. I have three members that are going to be leaving in just a very few minutes. So... Mr. Mr. President, Garcetti. just for the record, I was hitting no. It didn't record as a no, but if we could be recorded as a no again. Thank okay, you. since it doesn't change the outcome, we can just uh, change your, you. your vote. So that would make it 11 to what? 11 4. Okay. Mr. Parks? That's fine. You're good? Okay, so let's move to the next item. And again, thank you, Chief, for coming. I'm sure we'll be discussing this uh, more, but I, I do really appreciate you adjusting your calendar to be here. Mr. Uh, Alicone, I want to thank for coming uh, for this vote. He was on vacation and flew in just to do this. So, uh, my dear friend, I really appreciate that. Okay, now we're going to take up item four called special by uh, Mr. Buscaino, and I want to uh, thank your wife for my breakfast. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, we welcome Oh, Jay. we've got one card on this. You don't want the card first? Take the card? Oh, no, public comment has been satisfied okay. on this item. Thank you, sir. I'd like to welcome my wife and kids who are here joining us. Uh, Mr. President and members... Um, Where are they, Joe? They're in the office. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, hello up They're in the office. They're secluded in the office. <laughs> Got two little ones running around. <laughs> I called this item special, colleagues, because uh, I'd like to take a moment to explain how beneficial this ordinance will be in an effort to, to keep the Port of Los Angeles not the number one port in America. Um, as you know, the Port of LA serves a major, as a major economic engine and jobs generator for the city, the state, and our great nation. And in the face of the growing competition from the Panama Canal, and ports across the country and around the world, it's essential that we do everything possible to maintain our number one standing. And uh, we need to find ways, as you heard earlier this year, in partnering with Mr. Reyes in the Beat the Canal presentation here before you, uh, then we need to find ways to ensure our Port of Los Angeles is competitive in the wake of the expansion of the Panama Canal. This ordinance you see before you is an important step in ensuring we, we do just that. By enhancing our ability to expedite the permitting process for maritime-related construction at the port, we are ensuring our ability to stay competitive in the global marketplace. I'd like to thank my colleague again, Mr. Reyes, uh, for his leadership in moving forward on this item. I'm just great uh, to partner with you on this. i also like to commend our, our efforts, our great efforts, from the leadership team at the Port of Los Angeles. Dr. Natz is here before you if you have any questions, colleagues. And also the Department of Building Safety, Mr. Bud Obern is here as well. Thank you both for your leadership in moving forward on this ordinance. This truly is a great example of what can be done to accomplish when two departments come together to work together to make the city of Los Angeles a better place to do business. So with that, colleagues, uh, I ask for your aye vote in moving forward to ensure that we, uh, the Port of Los Angeles, remains the number one port in America. Thank you. Okay, Mr. LeBange. Thank you, uh, Mr. Buscaino. Well, thank you for your leadership of that district 
and the work previously of Janice Hahn, but Geraldine Nats coming west from Long Beach. Your contribution has been immense and the leadership that you've provided and the commission of which I know some of your commissioners real well. So I wanted to rise and uh, since you were all here and salute the Port of Los Angeles, it does make a difference and it reaches throughout our city and our region. Three things that make this city very special is the Department of Water and Power. We're celebrating the centennial of Mulholland's Aqueduct coming up next year. Los Angeles International Airport, which is a gateway for so many. And then the Port of Los Angeles and Phineas Banning, who came from Wilmington, and said, we want to make a port here, together with those who went before us on this council. So I stand for you, Joe, today, and for those who went before us, and I actually salute the Port of Los Angeles and your team, and also Bud Overham, who, as a former uh, city manager, now a general manager of our department, get a shot of that, Eric. As a former city manager, you know how important the combination is of the work between the city of Los Angeles, its port, and the people of Southern California. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. LeBanch. Mr. Reyes. Thank you, Council President. I do want to take a moment to thank Council Bruce Caino. Uh, when we had these discussions, there are many advocates that were involved in addressing the need to have the harbor be more competitive. As Council Buscaino steps in as council member, he took on the reins, and I thank him for being assertive and proactive in making sure that his district and the harbor, which lies in the district, is taking the necessary steps to eliminate redundancy, improve efficiencies, and by actually working with this concept of cooperation and breaking the silos between our departments so that we can eliminate this repetitive, uh, these endless loops that keeps our process from moving forward. So now building and safety and the Harbor Department will know who charges which fees, who covers which project. When we move on a project and get done, it will get done in a much more efficient manner. But more succinctly, those companies that will have to make a choice, do they come to the harbor or do they go through the Panama Canal? We will be able to say that as a harbor, as a city, as a region, we can now have a greater convenience, a greater efficient, move your products, have your ship come into our harbor and move inland in a manner that's going to be predictable. It will enhance confidence, but to echo the mantra of creating jobs. Now, in a previous action, we heard other speakers and former mayors talk about we have to create jobs, but we are creating jobs. And we are taking those steps. And this is a very clear example of that initiative to demonstrate our ability to be efficient. So I want to thank the Harbor Department. I want to thank Bud and, and Michael Legrand from planning, the mayor's office for our, and Cynthia, thank you. From Commissioner to Harbor, uh, a representative, done a great job. But more importantly, let's get the word out. Companies, representatives are listening to us because the leadership of Council Member Buscaino, with the cooperation of a multi jurisdictional effort, this region, this city is ready to compete with anybody. And we will take your products, we'll move inland, and we will keep our jobs and maintain our economy. So thank you so much. Thank you, Council President, as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. <laughs> Congressman-elect Cardenas. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm not going to be as powerful as a council member very long. Uh, <laughs> the, I just wanted to take a moment, Mr. President, to thank Joe Buscano for really doing a wonderful job out there. And this is a perfect example of the unsung work that happens uh, in this city and, and what people don't realize and what we take for granted, I believe, is that our port is a tremendous economic engine and it's extremely important to not only the region but to 
the, the entire country, the entire United States of America. And for somebody like uh, Buscano to come in without having legislative experience, but with his heart and his mind in the right place, he's actually getting things done. And I just wanted to take a moment to say that he's done an impressive job. And this is a perfect example of working with various departments, very large departments that have a lot of moving parts, and to be able to make it look simple and easy. So congratulations, Joe, on a wonderful job. All right, that concludes uh, the speakers on the queue. Madam Clerk, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Yeah, forthwith on that matter there. Good job. Thank you very much. Let's take up item number three, please. Item number three. Item number three, call special by Council Member Weizar. Mr. Weizar. Are there any public uh, cards on that, sir? One card. Okay, let's do the public cards, and then I'll speak, sir. Uh, Dr. Tom Williams. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Williams, we note your card. Thank you. No other public cards. Mr. Weizar. Thank you, Mr. President. And colleagues, I want to thank you for taking up this matter today. As you know, the preservation of Elephant Hill as a shared open space amenity for the City of Los Angeles and the community of El Sereno has been an ongoing effort for uh, the community for several years. Before I came into office in 2005, it was about 25 years that the community has been lobbying to save this last remaining undeveloped hill in this section of Los Angeles. In 2007, I worked to require appropriate environmental analysis of a planned development at Elephant Hill, and in 2009, we helped to negotiate the city's acquisition of the property. Then in 2011, the city sold a portion of the hill to the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, and now, today, in this action, we will have a general plan amendment and zone change which will ensure that the regulatory framework will provide Elephant Hill to remain a shared green open space for all to enjoy. I want to thank the planning department and their staff for their fine work on this report and ordinance. I'd also like to thank those who came out to speak in support of the City Planning Commission this summer and at the Plum Committee last month. And with that, I'd like to ask all my council members for an eye vote to finally uh, preserve an open, for, as open space Elephant Hill, which has been a controversial piece of land for some time, and the community of El Serena will forever be um, in gratitude for the work that this council has done. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. No other speakers on the queue. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. 13 ayes. And forthwith on that, that's a great present for the people. Good job, Mr. Weizar. Next item, item number 19. Item 19, call special for cards. I have some cards. Let me have Stephanie Lane, if that's is correct, John Walsh, Miriam Folger, and uh, Juan Alcala, if I have that correct. Thank you. Sergeant, will you make sure everything's in order? Stephanie. Hi, my name is Stephanie Lane. I'm from Good Jobs LA. Uh, we welcome the elimination of the MERS exemption as a first small step toward moving banks to clean up hundreds of blighted properties that are still, they are still failing to maintain. We call it a small step because LA still lags way behind many smaller cities when it comes to motivating banks to clean up these properties. You acted in June to strengthen the foreclosure registry ordinance after we presented a report showing smaller cities like Chula Vista, Richmond, Riverside, and Oakland have each collected millions in fines for blight violations by major banks, much more than LA has. Since then, we've gathered, gathered a lot more evidence with the help of the mayor's office, um, where a number of youth went around the city looking at blighted properties um, under supervision from the LA Conservation Corps. They found 450 blighted properties potentially subject to fines under the foreclosure ordinance. As in an earlier survey, a few big lenders were responsible for almost half the problem properties. This list is led by Bank of America, Bank of New York Mellon, Fannie Mae, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Deutsche Bank, and U.S. Bank. Some of these properties have festered like open sores on our neighborhoods for months. Good Jobs LA assisted in filing complaints regarding 50 of the worst properties on this list. And as best as we can determine, none of these have been um, no fines have been imposed on any of these properties, neither now or in previous complaints we filed. Good Jobs LA has submitted a report that includes six specific recommendations for strengthening enforcement, and I have a copy of this report for all of you today. 
We estimated last June that the city may have foregone up to $45 million in revenue by failing to impose appropriate penalties on banks that fail to take care of foreclosed properties. That remains true today. This change today is only part of um, all of the amendments you approved in, in June. We urge you to support this dropping of the MERS exemption um, and, and follow through with the rest of the... Thank you, Stephanie, for that. Thank you. Mr. Walsh is next. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. Brand new post today. What this is is a baby step in the, direct, in the right direction. Uh, Eric Garcetti and, and the mayoral candidates, this bank issue is not on, on, the, on the horizon. They, they, have, they say nothing about big banks or nothing about 99% versus 1%. What this does is now the banks don't have to register your foreclosed property. They had a special exemption put in here before by an, uh, another city council. This will eliminate the special exemption so it will be on the record. This is uh, not the most important thing, but remember, whenever you ask Eric about the banks, Mr. Garcetti, he's very, very quiet. Wendy Gruel's no better. HollywoodHighlands.org to find out what's happening. Marion Folger. Well, I didn't get my far. It looks pretty good. And um, what, what John was, was saying, I think this is a much better thing than what you've been doing. So far, you haven't been collecting the $1,000 a month. And um, it's very hard for me to get down here, very bad. So you people should have let me speak on number five. I think that was very uncalled and very rude not to let me speak because I got here a minute late because I was going to have an accident and it's not right traveling two hours to speak on these important matters. This is very good that you got here. What John Wall said is better. Thank you. Juan Ayala. Uh, my last name is Alcala. I have said it in this place like a thousand times, and you still don't remember it. My name is Juan Alcala. Juan Alcala. Thank you. No, it's not Alcala. It's Alcala. Learn a little bit of Spanish. Accent on the last A, Alcala. Thank you. It's almost like Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda. You know, you know those guys. You don't like him, do you? Anyway, uh, yeah. Here we go. Foreclosure, uh, lack of maintenance. Uh, right down my alley. I'm telling you, there is a way to provide housing for everyone and keep all the properties occupied. There is a way. We are smart enough to do it. Read my book, The United World of Free and Clear. It just tells you to line each other up and start thinking about real estate in a different way. Real estate should not be a commodity. Real estate should be just a place for everyone to live. If you want to have a castle, do high-end real estate. If you want to have businesses, do commercial real estate. That's fine. But for basic housing, we should change the way we do business everywhere in the world. The united world of free and clear. A world without mortgages, without landlords, without idiots telling you how to maintain or not maintain. A world where everybody maintains their own place. A world where everybody works, but everybody has a place to live. Let us stop being a bunch of idiots like we are. That completes the public comment card. Thank you. I call up Mr. Garcetti on the speaker queue. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you uh, for this which is before us. Foreclosed properties and the blight that sometimes accompany them pose a strong threat to our residential neighborhoods and it causes uh, serious security and health problems, can lower the home values, negatively affecting the real estate market. This is part of a trio of laws that we did to address uh, accountability with our banks. 
uh, specifically one to outlaw, we became one of the first, if not the first, city in the nation to outlaw illegal evictions from banks who took over foreclosed properties. Um, and that's been copied in over 100 cities now. Um, a foreclosure registry, which is here before us, and also the fines. And I share the frustrations with some from the public having passed the laws about the enforcement side of things, of making sure. And I'd like to add the six suggestions that were made to the report to the council file so we can ask uh, the department to report back on uh, its efforts to actually enforce and collect um, on some of this. The law, though, that exists here has allowed us to be able to make sure now that we have two lawsuits against two big banks that, are, uh, that had not maintained their properties or who had violated the law. That was with, I think, both Deutsche Bank and U.S. Bank. Um, but the city has been working with this specific – excuse me, sir, you had your time to speak. If you could please let us speak as well. Um, the city has begun working with a third-party data provider to cross-reference our existing reference and to make sure that banks are registering foreclosed properties. We have over 8,900 properties on the foreclosure registry, and it's estimated there could be several thousand more foreclosed properties that have not been reported. Before MERS, which was the industry registration, it was thought would capture everything, it's clear that it is not doing that. So eliminating the MERS exemption today will allow us to get a clear picture of the challenge that we're being faced with from the foreclosure crisis. And again, I hope that our Building and Safety Department can use that as a way of then going after those properties that we know are blighted, that have broken windows, that have grass growing, where we've seen gangs take over, we've seen graffiti there. Collect those fines, but better than collecting the fines, let's get those houses back uh, in the housing market and putting people in them. And uh, I want to thank those folks who've been working on doing that through the Neighborhood Stabilization Program and others. But let's pass this today and make sure that we know the full breadth of all the homes that are foreclosed in the city. Thank you. Let's uh, prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Fourth with, Mr. President. Fourth with. And on item five, Madam Clerk, fourth with. Okay, I guess we can go to item one. Item one, call special for cards. Mr. Murphy, Erica Diaz, I think this is Robert Lopez or Robert Loper. Sean, good morning. It's good to see you. Good morning, Mr. President. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, can Sergeant Arms get the flyers, please? I got over 20 of them. It's my choir's concert on December 9th. Item one is a good item. I support it. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Ms. Uh, Diaz? Good morning, Mr. President, Council Members. Uh, this is in regards to item 1B, 13043 Garber Street. Um, my client is J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. They are not the property owner. They're the bank. Um, and this property is not a foreclosed property. It is uh, current, not in default. And prior to the bank's receipt of the notice of violation, excuse me, the notice of today's hearing, it had no prior knowledge that this property was noncompliant or that there were any outstanding fees owed. So because of that, the bank had no reason to know that these items were due and that anything needed to be corrected. However, the bank is wanting to make a good faith gesture and doing what it can to uh, encourage the property owner to comply with the city's requests. And also, the bank respectfully asked that the city waive the late fees amounting to approximately $1,625 so that the city can be, excuse me, so the bank can be in a position to actually pay the lien off um, because it did not know that the fees were due prior to its receipt of today's hearing notice. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning to everybody. I'm, I'm here in behalf of MNN Smoke. I have a little small business. Um, it's a auto repair shop. And um, I got a couple of bills that uh, were incorrectly billed uh, for a different unit. Uh, the, u the building has many units, and I got different um, unit bill on my name. And that's why I'm here um, to, uh, to protest that. Um, 
course, I'm, I'm responsible to pay anything regarding my own property, but uh, it was incorrectly billed. Uh, that was like two or three years ago. So I'm here for that. Uh, Mr. Lopez also is here for, I believe, for the same reason. And I thank everybody for, for making the opportunity for us to present our, our cases. That's, that's wonderful. And, and I encourage everybody to keep up with the justice. That's the most important thing about human life. Okay, let's hear from the department. Yeah, um, my name is Charles Caribala. I'm, I'm here to represent uh, the Department of Building and Safety on item number one. Uh, regarding the uh, uh, first lady from the bank who talked, uh, the bank is not the property owner, so she, she doesn't represent the property owner. Uh, therefore, uh, she, 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 she can't speak to that property. Now, regarding the second property owner, uh, the address is uh, talking about The, the address is talking about, he claims that he made some payments, but we have not ascertained that yet. So I request that uh, we postpone this a couple of weeks where we'll take a closer look at this and see, identify which ones she, he paid and which ones he did not pay, and then we can um, uh, 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 advise the council later on. So I, I, I uh, respectively request that we postpone that a couple of weeks while we we'll take a look at it. Okay, so what item is that exactly, Madam Clerk? It was one, or what, yes, was, Charles? Yeah, yeah, I think it was, um, it was one I. That's the uh, one the gentleman was talking about. Property uh, address 20952 West Sherman, uh, item number 12 dash, council file 12 dash 1045. Is that the, sir, that's the address? Okay, so we're going to continue it for two weeks. Two weeks would bring us where, Madam Clerk? December 4th. Okay, so we're going to uh, continue that for two weeks where you can communicate with the department and hopefully work out uh, your concerns. Okay, thank you. So let's prepare to uh, vote on these items. Let us open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, now I have a card on item two. Mr. Walsh, you still here? Mr. Walsh passes. So on item two, let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Thirteen ayes. If we could move to item 21, I have John... Walsh, Miriam Fogler, and Donna Pierman. And Mr. President, for item one, an amending motion 21A has been circulated. Okay. I've, I've got you. I'm just calling three at a time. Mr. Walsh. Logging at HollywoodHighlands.org. Go to our website, see pictures of naked pictures of the mayor's girlfriend and Rupert Murdoch taking a pie in his face, the new owner of the L.A. Times. Uh, not in the paper yet. Okay, CRA. Now, if you think I'm here just uh, abusing myself up here, remember, when it comes to the CRA, I got up in 1972 and said, CRA! I will live to dance on your grave. That was in Berkeley, California, when I lived in the CRA district there. And guess what? Constant, constant harassment of the CRA, and it's gone. This is another, bit, another thing where you're getting rid of their, uh, like a jackal eating their gizzard. The CRA is gone. I am not a gadfly. I don't annoy you. I destroy your chances of making money. HollywoodHighlands.org. Okay, Ms. Fogler, followed by Donna, Donna Pierman, followed by Dow, Dow House Dude. Folks, we're getting ripped off again. If we try to revitalize this thing, try to bring it back, 
They got Prop 26 with our transportation money, and you, as you may know, Prop 30 was passed by transportation, no, the education money that's in there too, Prop 26 that was passed last year. The fact is the CRA <coughs> is buried in Prop 26 also. So my folks, you know, your questioning is how are you paying this Prop 30 funds when you know we have redevelopment funds available? That tells you right there, they're not utilizing the monies that should be part of the city here. You know, this is starting here all the way up to the Congress. And I'm hoping it stays Republican because my dear Democrats love to spend just like they're doing here at city council. What they can't wait is get their hands on whatever money they can have that's the idea. That's why they didn't want to speak on number five, was the fact is that they want to utilize the best, fairest way to raise tax money is the sales tax, but it's not worth, it's not ethically right when you got people who are not using the money right, and this is what they're doing with the redevelopment money right now. They're tucking it under the rug, and this is not the way to doing it when you're asking people to give up money out of their pockets low middle class people to subsidize your businesses such as your car dealerships and your film industries. And even the lady on uh, Channel 35 even said you were going to pass the sales tax to subsidize the uh, car dealers. So I already know what your plans are and I didn't get to hear it all until after I heard you speak last week. So I'm withdrawing my support of course because I know you're not very worthwhile for the money. Thank you. Ms. Pierman, followed by Dow, Dow House Dude. I want to know, are you Dr. Frankenstein? Why are you trying to bring the CRA back from the dead? Didn't the CRA take enormous amounts of our money? Why our city is such in debt and why you even talked about the sales tax, which I have believed that probably won't be working very well. Uh, that's what we're, uh, we bring it back to CRA in another name. That's what it looks like over here. It hasn't really described what they're doing with the CRA or it says that it's not taking the CRA money and bringing it back to the general fund. It doesn't look like it's saying there. It's saying, it looks like it's saying another entity, which is going to be the new CRA. So it looks like, you know, you guys just can't let it go, can you? You just got to bring back development. So, um, Anyway, uh, and that's why the CRA is the reason why the city employees, the uh, hard, uh, why we have a hard time trying to pay for our city services in the first place. This is the culprit over here, the CRA. So I'm hoping that you, uh, when I hear you speak, that you'll be saying that the CRA is not alive and there's no new agency that's coming in its place because, uh, you know, I think uh, that, uh, yeah, we wouldn't need this. We wouldn't have any bad problems if the CRA hadn't stolen all the money in the last place, and now it looks like they left it in a disarray. But I'd rather leave it in a disarray than bring back the CRA. Let's not bring back the CRA. Let them die. Mr. Dude. Uh, yeah, she had her hair sticking up. I was just letting her know. Go right ahead. Uh, community redevelopment agency, billions spent, nothing done. Billions spent, nothing done. Everybody's homeless. Everybody is homeless because the way you run the business, the minute you miss Paying a thousand dollars in tax, you lose your house. We have to redo the way we do real estate. We have to do the redo the way we do business. It's not working for anybody. All the all you do, your whole job here is hearing people complain about the way real estate is done. And you still don't get the idea that we have to change the way we do real estate. We have to have a place where nobody has to go around losing their house for any reason. 
There is no reason that public entities should be given money to do things that they never do. If you let the people keep the money that they're giving you and let them uh, take care of their own business, their own place, their own house, then we won't have this mess. We don't need so many lawyers. We don't need so many politicians. We just need people helping people. Let's change the way we do business. CRA, stay dead. Okay, thank you. And before I go to the queue, um, if I could get uh, IT Channel 35, could we get a quick shot of uh, the partial Buscaino clan? Let's, let's put the children on television. Can we go to Mr. There they are. There's a, oh, there's a wife, the complete family. Good, good looking group. Wave to yourself, kids. <laughs> okay, Miss, uh, Mr. LaBange. I uh, have a, a malfunction that I didn't hit it. I really could have jumped on that, Mr. LaBange, but I. <laughs> Uh, and this could be an opportunity I never have again. <laughs> but I, but I love you so. Thank we'll move on to Miss Perry. Uh, the reason I rise to speak is uh, my concern about the direction before us today regarding the disposition of redevelopment properties. Now I know the state has painted our city into a corner regarding the disposition of these properties. Now, specifically, there's not enough staff at the Department of Finance to review information and issue certificates of completion in a timely manner. However, cities do not retain all redevelopment-related properties. Future sales and property tax revenues may be withheld. For the City of Los Angeles, any reduction to general fund revenues presents a serious problem given our long-term structural deficit. In the meantime, redevelopment properties languish and stand still, causing blight to the very communities they were intended to improve. Just to give you an example, at Slauson and Wall, this was to be an affordable housing and park in Council District 9. This project has now become, or this property has become a dumping ground that we have to constantly tend to, and the vacant buildings are a site that is being used as an illegal shelter. Now my field office and the designated local authority, the development team, the neighbors, and LAPD have all been vigilant about keeping this site under control through constant maintenance, but we cannot keep pace. The city is spending resources to maintain properties like Slauson and Wall, yet we are not receiving any compensation from the state to do this. So today I've introduced a motion asking for a report from the legislative analyst and the administrative officer on how to resolve this problem. I would also like this opportunity to publicly call on state legislators to allow the Department of Finance to hire more staff so these reviews can be done in a reasonable amount of time. I am beyond frustrated that the housing assets still have not been transferred to our own housing department and that we are losing valuable time while we could be creating more affordable housing. So what I'm asking for is a sense of urgency from the state of California. I understand redevelopment agencies are eliminated, but now I'm asking for an expeditious review so we can move the next phase of developing a long-range property management plan and realizing the intent of redevelopment. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Uh, so let's prepare to vote on this item. And Madam Clerk, can we just incorporate into this vote what Ms. Perry wants to do? Yes, it'll be um, as amended. Okay. So why don't we open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote? Thirteen ayes. Okay, Mr. Cardness, are you ready or you want me to take up a... Okay, now we'll go to item 22, which was held special by Mr. Cardness. Uh, can we go to... Did we have a card on this, Mr. President? Yes, we did. Comment? Dr. Williams, Dr. Tom Williams, on item 22. An amending motion 22A has been circulated. Good morning. Dr. Tom Williams, LA 32 Neighborhood Council. The consolidated plans 
It deals with neighborhoods. However, the neighborhood councils, Dunn and others, weren't really informed. There was very little outreach, but maybe that was because they didn't want anyone from East LA, Northeast LA, Southeast LA to attend. There was one meeting in all of East LA. We asked for another one, but we were only given two days warning for the first meeting, but nothing has occurred. We would highly recommend that you include that all consolidated plans must be vetted through the neighborhood councils where those neighborhoods are impacted because we don't know what's going on in another city department. Reserve one minute. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cardenas. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And uh, it's been distributed item 22A. This is reprogramming uh, funds. And also I'd like to point out that the vast majority of these funds are going to organizations that are providing citywide services and critical services for the city of Los Angeles. And uh, just wanted to thank my colleagues uh, for all the cooperation and support on all of these efforts we've done throughout the city when it comes to these precious funds that we get from the federal government. Thank you. Oh, and also I'd like to add verbally to item 22A that it end with uh, that the, gen the CDD general manager shall execute the agreements as per the motion. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Ms. Perry, item 22. My questions have been answered. Ms. Perry's questions have been answered. If we could uh, prepare to vote on this, Madam Clerk, let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. And that's adopted as amended. Okay, I guess we'll move to item 23. We have I, cards. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead, Madam Clerk. Um, call special for cards. Okay, fourth with on 22. Uh, if I could have Dr. Tom Williams come forward, if I could have uh, John Walsh, HollywoodHighlands.org, and Dow, in fact, it's Juan Dowhouse. So, Mr. Walsh, uh, Dr. Williams. Tom Williams. Uh, John Walsh. This uh, is an, a very unusual item. You are now going to remove 1,140 underutilized on-street parking meters. You mean they are losing money? You spent millions of, I hate to be an old white guy, hi, you chick, want our money? But this one is a doozy. I mean, uh, the Times is, is on your side. Uh, Monica Lewinsky works over there with, uh, uh, as, as a L.A. Times reporter. You, you see what's happening here? They built, they put them in, they installed them, they're losing money, now they're spending money to remove, and I go to item 12-1768, if you're out, out there, Google that, to find out whether these are, any of these are in your neighborhood. Why, and they're not going to answer, why are you taking out parking meters? Why did you put in the parking meters? Meanwhile, you have a half cent sales tax, and I'd like to announce the honorary chairman of our no on half cent sales tax. Stay They're on the twin subject. chairmans on the topic. Stay on the subject. The topic, they will be standing in front of an underutilized parking meter, and that'll be Reardon and Villaragosa as our honorary co chairman. Thank you, Mr. Dude. Yes, uh, I am going to give uh, Mr. Welch a steam machine so he can uh, iron out his uh, coats. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, parking meters. Has anybody ever voted for a parking meter? Is anybody stupid enough to vote for a parking meter? Why do we have them to begin with? Is it to rob the people? It is to rob the people for no reason at all. And all those idiots giving you parking tickets, what do they do for a living? All they do is hurt people. You have hired people to hurt people. You are nothing but, oh, you're just like the mafia. 
They hire people to go pe break people's legs. You are doing the same thing as the mafia. You hire parking people to go hurt people. Idiots. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Laban. The transportation uh, through its uh, advent since 1948 has placed parking meters throughout the city of Los Angeles. The first one uh, is on Lancashire Boulevard. That being said, these are to remove parking meters and uh, work with the local business community. There is a function for the Department of Transportation uh, to do this to provide turnover parking and also our officers often take a lot of abuse in this area here so they also get excellent training to be able to be safe and do the job. The merchants do like the turnover parking so I wanted to rise for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, Mr. Labange. So if we could uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, what, before I get to you, Mr. Koretz, what I want to request is a quick uh, vote on reconsideration where it relates to item 8. So, Madam Clerk, if you could open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay. Um, okay, now we're going to vote on the measure again. Let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Okay, Mr. Koretz. I just, w just wanted to ask that uh, item, uh, the item that was just heard previously, item 23, go forthwith. Forthwith. Just to mention, the department was looking to salvage those for any articulate uh, way that they could and reuse them even for art projects. Thank you. Right, Daniel? Yeah. Okay. Um, let us go now to... Item 24, Mr. Walsh. Oh, is he out of time? What about uh, Mr. Dow House, dude? So both of them are out of town. Out of time, not out of town. Okay, let's uh, vote on this item. There are no speakers in the queue. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. Eleven eyes. Okay. The, uh, the next item is item 25, Dr. Williams. Good morning. Uh, Dr. Tom Williams, LA 32 Neighborhood Council. How uh, El Sereno. More taxes? Are these taxes? They seem to be something like Measure J. Do these require two-thirds majority vote? We're kind of interested in that because we have school improvements. I thought we got rid of that. We have the pension plan, of course, but it's cost neutral. What do they mean by cost neutral? Staff report needed. Neighborhood public safety. Virtually every neighborhood council within the city of Los Angeles has a public safety committee. But we've never heard of this one coming up. So it's kind of interesting how uh, some departments coordinate with us, but others don't. So I'd highly recommend uh, continue it and get us some more detail. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no speakers on the queue. On this item, Madam Clerk. Let us open the roll. Yes, Mr. Englander. Taking all three measures separately, I missed that part of the conversation. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to 25. Okay. So let's, on, on 20, on oh no, we're, no, so Mitch, no, that was my mistake. Okay. So what was your question? Um, on, on just on the three different measures, if you're going to be taking them uh, separately, or all, all as one item. Let, let's have the, we can do that. We can just take them separately. How would we go about that? 
Uh, do you, we, we can, uh, if, if council wishes to vote on each measure title separately, um, then that may be done. Okay, then what's the first item we would be voting on? First would be uh, the first measure, neighborhood public safety and vital city services funding and accountability measure, Proposition A. Okay. No. Um, and this, this is not, uh, uh, just f so people know, this is not to, um, to actually vote on any of these. It's just the naming of them and what we're going to call them. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So on A, let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes, 1 no. Okay. Now on the, what's the next issue that's before us? Second measure is fire and police pension plan, cost neutral purchase of retirement credit by certain members. Charter Amendment B. Okay, there's no speakers on the queue. Let's uh, move forward and vote on this item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Okay, let's vote on the next measure. Third measure, Burbank Schools Improvement Measure, Proposition S. Okay. Let us uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Okay, forthwith. Uh, let's now go to item 29, held special by Mr. Murphy, Sean Murphy. Yes, good morning. Item 29, it's a good item. It's good for the city. I support it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. On item 29, Madam Clerk, let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Where are we on the agenda? That takes counsel to general public comment. Okay. Then we'll go into general public comment. I want to call back to the uh, podium. Sean Murphy, Cardin Weiss, and Dr. Williams. Yes, Sean. Good morning, Mr. President. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody, to all my fans out in L.A. I'll be on the Greyhound this time tomorrow. Uh, we need to keep our streets clean. We, need to, we don't want any layoffs with the LAPD or the fire department. I am against that. Try to work on your, try to keep them employed. Also, those flyers I gave you, there's a phone number. There's a couple of phone numbers I need. The car's going to be busy that week, that weekend. Uh, if you're coming, call me up, and we need to know how many is coming so we can reserve the seats. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weiss, followed by uh, Dr. Tom Williams, followed by John Walsh. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. President and members of the council. Uh, my apologies for my poor handwriting. Uh, my name is Carolyn Weiss. I'm here <laughs> representing only myself this morning. Um, today, November 20th, is the Transgender Day of Remembrance. This um, Day of Remembrance is observed throughout the world in commemoration of the lives and in memory of those lives who were taken during this past 12 months um, because of hate and violence directed at those whose only, um, the only thing they did was to try to live their lives as their authentic selves. Um, according to one list that I've seen, there were 265 um, transgender people who were murdered in the past 12 months. That's probably a gross undercount. Um, many of those were tortured. Um, some of those were stoned to death, some were beheaded, um, all lost their lives for no real reason. In the United States, the list is um, greater than two dozen. In the city of Los Angeles, um, one person, Cassidy Vickers, was, uh, her life was snuffed out on the streets of Hollywood um, two years almost to the day, November 18th, 2011. Um, I don't know if she was murdered because of who she was, because her killer has not been found yet, um, although I do know that the LAPD is making progress on that case. Um, we will hold 
the day of remembrance every year that some of us are killed for just trying to be the people that, that we are, to be our true, authentic selves. Um, I ask that um, perhaps this time next year, the city could um, uh, fly the transgender flag in solidarity well, for um, the transgender dead for that th one day. Thank, thank you. you. And, and I don't think you'll get much pushback from us where it relates to that uh, request. Okay, Mr. Mr. Dr. Williams. Dr. Tom Williams, LA 32 Neighborhood Council. Somebody this morning asked, why did I shave my head? Simple. There's a fellow out in San Bernardino, a police, uh, sorry, a sheriff's officer. He can't find a match in a population of 30 million people here in the state of California. Can't find one match. If you also notice that his children will have even more of a problem. So what do we have? We spend $50,000 for arrest and conviction of somebody, for killing somebody. But here's one man, he's going to die if he doesn't get a match. He has at least two children that I saw. But what's happening to us? We're willing to spend 50000 for arrest and conviction for killing, but we, in fact, are letting somebody die. We have a lot of people in DWP. We have a lot of people in the port of L.A. We have a lot of people in the city general fund employment. But where are the people who are willing to donate their bone marrow in order to keep one person alive. We don't know. So we'd really like to have the city council initiate their own program to encourage all eligible donors, that is generally between 20 and 40 years old. I'm too old. My son, he had 10 matches. Wow, but he was Caucasian. But it's a problem within our community, the state of California. One person will die within th about three months if he doesn't get a bone marrow transplant. Please register, thank you. Thank you, our personnel department does a great job and city employees are great contributors to many good drives such as that. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Mr. Walsh, thank you. John Walsh, blogging at hollywoodhighlands.org. Come to our website and see why we put a pie in the face of Rupert Murdoch, who now essentially owns the L.A. Times. They recently, uh, the L.A. Times fired Mr. Hartenstein, their CEO. They had six billion people to pick. They picked Mr. Liguori, Peter Liguori, a right-hand man, a right-hand man, a vice president of Fox News. So if the now CEO of Tribune is a Fox News underling, who do you think is about to announce who owns? But remember, who will own the L.A. Times? Number one, get rid of everybody at, uh, to uh, Murdoch. Get rid of every reporter that you have on the, uh, covering the city. Get rid of them. They can find jobs. There are many shoppers that will need uh, uh, reporters. And I want to say how much I enjoyed the Korean candidate night for mayor, because they came up with a great idea. At the end of your time, they give you 30-second warning, 15 and 5. They don't tell you your time is up. They do what you do to us. They cut your sound off. Uh, Eric found, got, finally found out, and all the candidates, Wendy, found out what it's like to be talking and have your sound cut off. Thank you to the Korean political community. Antonio's career is going nowhere. He's now started a rumor that he's going to be secret he's going to be chairman of the party. He's going to replace Deborah Wasserman Schultz. Hey, I will all give you one hundred dollars for every picture you can find of Barack with his arm around Antonio on election night. He stays away from him like M the plague. Mr. Walsh, just for a moment, hold his time. The mayor is not under our jurisdiction. If you can relate the to things that are under our jurisdiction. Thank you, Mr. The mayor Walsh. isn't under Continue. your jurisdiction? Continue. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, look, 
He is trying to get brownie points with the mayor. The mayor's finished on June 30th. I'll have as much power as he does on June 30th, which is zero. HollywoodHighlands.org, Antonio Villaraigosa, nowhere on July 1st. Michael Hubman, Michael Hubman. Uh, Mr. England or before? Hold on, Michael. Real quick, can I just get 9, 10, 11 forthwith, please? Say it again. 9, 10, and 11 forthwith. 9, forth 10, with. and 11 forthwith. Good morning, Mr. President, City Council. My name is Michael Waterman Hubman, and I'm a human rights and homeless rights activist, and I'm a right to share food activist. Um, and um, I haven't been here in a while. Um, also, I operate the Charity Water Corps, and we provide bulk drinking water to the homeless people on Skid Row in Los Angeles, and we've been had continuous operations for six years this October. I haven't been here for a while. I see only one new face in the um, horseshoe, and um, that's, I, I believe I got to meet Councilman Buscayano at um, the Janice Hahn Victory Party, but if not, um, mucho gusto, Councilman Buscayano. Um, ever, all of my spare time since um, the beginning of Occupy LA has been spent making the intellectual case for economic justice. And I believe I've done my part, but the result couldn't have been better. We have a Democratic president, we have a Democratic Senate, we picked up seats in the House, uh, a nearly clean sweep for progressives on the initiatives, and Elizabeth Warren in the Senate. A victory lap is due. Um, um, that's that. That's that. Um, I haven't been here in a while, but um, I intend to make myself more present in the future. I know that um, um, actions speak louder than words, but I intend to um, resume lobbying the public interest on behalf of the civil and human rights of homeless people. And um, that's about it. Um, Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. You have a good Thanksgiving. Donna Pearman, Donna Pearman, Miriam Fogler. Okay. Uh, anyway, I wanted to tell you, first of all, the mayor is your boss, so you can speak about him. Anyway, my mind, Eric Garcetti is still president. President Eric Garcetti would have taken cards even after it started or would have listened to us at least. And we, we should reopen the video conferencing. It wouldn't have happened uh, why it takes two, it takes so long to get here, about two hours and eight blocks, and there's no restrooms nearby, and the LA Times refused. Uh, we don't, we wouldn't, anyway, we wouldn't need sales tax if the city council members were part time or cut their pays or pension. I love to see that. Uh, it's significantly, not just a little bit. I have changed my mind in the sales tax. I don't believe you put in our best advantage. You will spread it thin. Not just use for essential city services like you'll use it for midnight bas basketball or uh, uh, after school programs, so it should be on Prop 30, by the way. Uh, that's why you, the silly voters voted for it. Raritan didn't get his permanent pass exemption put in, and that's why the city council, and with, the, with the city council, and that's why they're going after the middle class city workers, all but the DWP, who makes 50% more. Pay isn't equal, uh, work for equal pay. Prop 30 gave the huge increases to all the city presidents and all the high salary administrators. So if people think it's going to go for the classroom, it's going to be going for the high price, uh, administrators who always got tax increase, uh, tax raises. I mean, I already got raises already, so we should uh, go back and take that back. You give car dealer tax, tax credits or pay no, uh, or they don't pay any cash, uh, gross tax receipts. Oh, so why should we bail you, bail you out of the uh, sales tax? You know, uh, let's see, sales, uh, yeah, let's see, we're trying to make, uh, well, yeah, we're trying to make up for the gross tax receipts with the sales tax. Donna, so, uh, Donna I don't thank you very much, tax. Donna. Let's call Miriam Fogler up here. As I was saying, you're making the rich get richer and poor get poorer by using the any ploy to most use the most fair tax, of course. The other ones are more selective groups. And of course, you people just continue this 
uh, taxation and, and, and pour it on and then give, it, uh, give tax breaks to big corporations like your car dealerships. The lady on L.A. City View, Ellen Chang, said it August 3rd. We're going to pass the city tax to offset the, uh, to take out the gross receipts tax. So, folks, you're paying for it. You're paying for people who are upper middle class making 250000 and up. Don't vote for any taxes for the city council because, mind you, right now, they're not minding the store. They're not even caring about cutting their salaries and pensions in half when they're expecting too much from the city workers, you know, who have given so much concessions already. And Reardon, what? Yeah, and you don't live within your means. You don't. You just go back to your old spending habits, just like the school district is going to do the same thing. You people are fools to vote for Prop 30. Stupid to give to, to test these people. You should put a, uh, a conditions in them, built them in, the advocate to have accountability, showing where the monies go, how it's being spent. You overspend everything. That's what you like to do, and then take it from the public more and more. That's what you're doing. And you made me, I cannot, couldn't speak on this matter because I had to use the restroom and uh, I missed out to put my card in in time. And I think it's a very bad thing you did that to me, being disabled, physically disabled. And I should be able Thank to you, speak Bolger. in bad eyes. Thank you so much, Mr. Dollhouse. Thank you, Mr. Dollhouse. You gave your uh, words to George. George Azarian, you want to speak? Mr. Dollhouse is going to give it to you. Is that correct? No, he has a card. He has a card, too. Don't worry about yourself. I just called you. You want to give your card? All right, let's go. Keep going. Here we go. Well, thank you. What about my time? Your time is running. Keep going, Sergeant. Sit down, uh, yours, George. Yours is too low. Soon you're going to be dead. Soon you're going to be. That's a threat, sir. Be careful. Everybody. That's a threat. Be careful, sir. Why don't we help each other live a better life? I'm not making a threat. I'm saying we live a short life. Don't misunderstand me. Soon we are all going to be dead. Why do we treat each other the way we do? That's all I'm saying. I'm not threatening anybody. And I don't need to even be touched by you ever again, sir. Please address the council. Thank you. Well, the council didn't touch me. It was him. You know, and I did nothing wrong. All I said, soon we're all going to be dead. That's a fact of life. Life is short. Okay? You understand that now? Anyway, this time is nothing. I'm telling you, we need to be good to one another. We need to make a system where nobody's losing their home for any reason. Uh, Miss pa Miss Part, I, I was telling Miss Ray, I mean Perry, uh, why does it sound so wrong when you're saying somebody's using illegal shelter? Somebody's over there using illegal shelter. Don't human beings have the right to sleep somewhere? George Azarian. Stupid. George Azarian. I find a very good building. Very, very uh, income for city hall, for low income people. And the grand city, LA uh, land, belong to Los Angeles. A thirty unit, two floor. He got an income twenty two thousand dollars every month. Every month collect twenty two thousand dollars. He asked only two million three hundred dollars. Site is very big. Can do another building forty unit altogether seventy unit. Very cheap, very good for low-income people, and then I'm going to give all my food over there, one place, thousand people. 
That's what I want to see you all help me up. That's it. Thank you, George. Uh, for the record, Madam City Attorney, Mr. Dollhouse exited the council chamber, articulating uh, his voice uh, to disrupt the meeting. Next speaker, Antonio Ramirez. Good morning. First, let me begin by saying, LAPD Chief Charlie Beck, you have made a bad judgment call. Criminal illegal immigrants and Latino Hispanic gangbangers are the most wicked, treacherous, and evil hate-mongering racists. And no, they are treated unfairly. They are not untreated unfairly. You can be the fool. Do you mind? You can be the fool that falls for that pathetic song and dance, but we all know that their intent is to thrash, kill, and destroy America. Hence, you have committed political suicide big time. With that, I take great pleasure in doing your job in the front lines, LAPD and deputies. You have apartment owners who hire criminal illegal aliens as housekeepers, managers, handymen. They hire cheap labor who are bent on harassing, stalking, invading tenants' privacy, entering their apartments without notice, failing to keep the premises clean from litter and or anything unsanitary, and have these criminal Ill illegals and criminal deviants invite their criminal elements, their friends, gangbangers, and illegals to vandalize, to graffiti, and destroy tenants' property and go through their personal belongings. But LAPD will tell you, why don't you move out? Or it's a civil matter. Case in point, the property at 245 South Lucas Avenue, LA California 90026 is managed by Gary Noss Income Property. The owner, Francis G. Smith, has stupidly and incompetently hired three illegal aliens and uh, vandalizers, Carmen, Santiago, and Roberto. These diabolical, wicked criminal aliens band with other felons and gangbangers at the neighboring... Uh, um, apartments at 1345 Emerald Drive and surrounding apartments to join in a destructive criminal empire. So I say deport, deport, deport. No amnesty, no asylum. Thank you, Honorable Governor Jan Brewer and ex-Governor of California Pete Wilson. Man, were you right? And ex-Mayor of Costa Mesa, Ellen Mansour. Bravo, man. Uh, you are my heroes, baby. It's time to kick ass and get these Wet facts out of here. Hey, uh, Thank you very remove much. that you last so phrase welcome. there for the record, Madam City Attorney. Would you note that the foul language at the end? Mark Guterres, please. Mark Guterres. Good morning, Council. My name is Mark Gutierrez here with. Uh, Two LAX workers, uh, Maria Cuadros and Joel Sanchez, uh, we're here to present to you uh, 500 commitments from their fellow workers uh, who will be supporting and coming out tomorrow uh, at LAX at noon for a major, major uh, mobilization. We feel we have no choice but to keep engaging uh, in these uh, demonstrations at LAX. Our, as you know, our negotiations with the contractor Aviation Safeguards is currently at a standstill, uh, and we continue uh, to uh, defend the living wage, uh, defend the standard that these folks have fought for uh, for years now. Thank you very much. I'd like to um, uh, submit these for the record. Um, thank you. And I know that we'll see some of you tomorrow there, and we thank you for the support that we've gotten uh, from the majority of council. Joel Sanchez. Was him. All right, note that and file. Finally, Ziggy Cruz. Good morning, council members. My name is Ziggy Cruz. I'm a resident in Hollywood. I'm here today to talk about the neighborhood council system and the failure to post its agendas as required under Bong's policy 2010-02. Um, individual stakeholders in Hollywood have taken it upon themselves to look at four of the six neighborhood councils and four out of four not posting adequately. I think that's a failure of following the city's policy, the charter, bonk, you name it. However, the stakeholders are being told as long as a neighborhood council posts in one location, they are compliant with the Brown Act. Well, if you read the policy of the bonk policy, basically, uh, at the bottom when it has the implementation of the enforcement of posting the agendas, you will know 
that the wording is very loosey loose. It talks about the five to seven posting location as they were implemented and imposed on themselves through the uh, time when they were trying to become a neighborhood council and that this has to be continued throughout. This is a policy that was put back into place in 2010. It needs to be enforced. When you have stakeholders tell the neighborhood council you didn't post adequately and neighborhood councils still conduct their board meetings, in my opinion, and I'm not an attorney, nor I'm anything else other than a stakeholder, they are not complying with city laws. Now my question, and it's a rhetorical question, I don't expect to get an answer today from anybody here since nobody seems to be paying much attention anyway. I see two council members. Thank you, Mr. Garcetti, for doing that, and Mr. Krikorian. But the rhetorical question we have, oh, Mr. Cardinals, I'm sorry I omitted you there. And Mr. England, and now peaked up too, thank you. Uh, the question I have is when does the city stop choosing and picking from state law as well as city laws when that seems to be fitting them. City laws are being upheld for street closures when the state law prohibits that, but the Brown Act comes in as a rescue for anybody as long as we say we are in compliance with the city or with the state law. Thank you. Thank you. There's no other speakers. Uh, public comment cards. We've completed com public comment. Uh, any other items before us? Council has motions for posting and referral. So ordered. That the desk is clear. Any announcements, members? Mr. Koretz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to take a moment to send our thoughts and prayers to the people of Israel. People throughout the great city of Los Angeles have been much saddened and angered by the recent uh, barrage of rockets from Gaza into Israel. Peace-loving people throughout Los Angeles and the world decry such terrorist violence that is aimed at Israel and gravely harms the cause of peace. LA shall always stand firmly in support of the cause of peace and of Israel's security, independence, and well-being. There are numerous press reports that there could be a, ne a negotiated ceasefire uh, as early as today. Let us all join in praying for that outcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Koretz. Announcements, Mr. Parks. I'd just like to make sure the public's aware that the uh, recently, uh, a recent display of honoring Dwight Howard at City Hall is going to be on the Time Warner Cable Backstage Lakers show on Wednesday, November 21st at 5 p.m. Any more announcements? Just to make announcements, members and staff, if you get a chance, walk across the Bridge Gallery. There's an artist. Ms. Jamerson, wonderful paintings of many of the monuments around the city, many in your districts. Also, the Los Angeles Times photographers and their work at the space shuttle flying through the city. KNX is in the house right now, so we appreciate that. No announcements. We have adjourning motions. All rise for adjourning motion. Sergeant. Thank you, Sergeants. Ms. Perry. Two, two adjourning motions. First, I am saddened to inform all of us that the uh, former general manager of the Department of General Services, Randall C. Bacon, has passed away. Mr. Bacon was the past president of the National Forum for Black Public Administrators. And during his tenure as uh, an administrator, Mr. Bacon served as general manager, Department of General Services for the city of Los Angeles. Celebration of Mr. Bacon's life begins on Friday, November the 23rd. Uh, there will be a public viewing, a uh, private uh, Omega ceremony and a family tribute at Angeles Funeral Home at 38, 3875 South Crenshaw Boulevard. And then on Saturday 24th is his funeral service at 11 a.m. at First African Methodist Episcopalian Church, Episcopal Church at 2270 South Harvard. Um, Avenue. Mr. Mr. Bacon's family has asked that for those who wish to contribute, they are establishing a Randall C. Bacon Memorial Endowment Fund to honor his life, career, and legacy. He served as the 25th Grand Home March of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity from 1985 to 1988, and the fund is being administered by the general manager of Kappa Alpha Psi uh, located uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, the address is 2322 North Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19132. Telephone number 
225-6566. Secondly, I'd like to adjourn in memory of Gertrude Brown. She was a graduate of Jefferson High School. She was married to her husband, Lawrence Brown, for over 60 years. She was a devoted and lifetime member of Morning Star Baptist Church and an important part of the South Los Angeles community. She worked very closely with the 43rd Street Block Club and hosted many meetings at her home. She is survived by her five children, Lawrence Jr., Lewis, Carol, Gary, and Brenda, many grand and great-grandchildren, and a host of relatives, friends, and loved ones. She will be sincerely missed. Thank you, Ms. Perry, and also on Randall Bacon. He was a very approachable general manager who uh, all you had to call was 5801, and he'd pop on the phone and assist us in any which way. I'm sorry to hear of his passing so early. Mr. Parks. Thank you. I'd like to ask that we adjourn in memory of Rosalind Grayson, who was born September 1941, passed away November 14, 2012. Rosalind grew up in Westfield, Alabama, where she confessed her, uh, to Christ at an early age. She was baptized at the Bethel Baptist Church in Westfield, Alabama. She attended elementary and high school in Westfield, Alabama, and after graduation from Westfield, she moved to Los Angeles with her father in order to continue her education. In December 1961, she married uh, Jimmy Grayson. On September 4, 1962, her first daughter, Jeffrina Lynn, was born. And on July 1968, their second daughter, Jennifer Laurie, was uh, born. In December 1994, Rosalind retired from the Pac Bell after completing 35 years of service. She loved her home gardening, cooking, and pampering her beloved pets. She was a woman of high standards and no nonsense, who was upfront and did not mind letting anyone know it when her standards were being compromised. She's also a beautiful, gracious, elegant lady with a smile as bright and warm as the sun. Her mere presence was both an inspiration and a comfort to all who knew her. Rosalind loved her, the Lord, her family, and her friends. She survived by her husband, retired Lieutenant Jimmy Grayson, her daughter, retired Sergeant Jeffrina Grayson Berrios, her uh, son-in-law, Michael, Sergeant Michael Barrios, her nephew, Lieutenant Daryl Grayson, who's assigned a mission division, and her niece, Sergeant Cynthia Grayson, in the office of the Chief of Police. Memorial service will be held on Saturday, November the 24th at 1 p.m. at Grace Chapel in Inglewood Cemetery, located at 70, 720 East Florence in Inglewood. And the repast will take place at the Proud Bird in the Tuskegee Room, located at 11022 Aviation, immediately after the service. Uh, thank you. Uh, members, I, I'd like to ask we adjourn in memory of Joseph Duffy. Reverend Joseph Duffy lived to be the great age of 87. He was loved by his parishioners, uh, as well as his many nieces, grandnieces, and uh, family members. Uh, he is... Uh, the uncle to my chief of staff, Carolyn Ramsey, asked we adjourn in memory of lived a good life, 87. You get to 87, that's all right, Father Duffy. Uh, that concludes the adjourning motions, but we have an additional announcement. I'd like to call on Mr. Reyes. Yes, uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, just wanted to acknowledge we had a great game this past weekend. It was a fantastic game, very competitive. We were able to see an amazing display of skills from athletes of both teams, but there had to be a victorious winner, and that was UCLA Bruins. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That doesn't mean you're adjourning for the other team, are you, Mr. Reyes? Okay, members, let's uh, go forward. Remember, life is very special each day.